Today on Newsbeat, LSU celebrates Veterans Day and remembers the fallen soldiers. And also the chaos surrounding the Louisiana food stamp system is boiling over. All this and more Newsbeat starts now. Good evening and welcome to Newsbeat. I'm Ambry Washington. And I'm Michael Edmondson. Thanks for joining us. It's Veterans Day and it's been a day of ceremonies and observances throughout the country. Louisiana recognizes Emmeline Ann Bourgeois as the state's oldest female veteran. According to the advocate, Bourgeois, a native to Thibodeau, Louisiana, enlisted in the U.S. Army Nurse Corps on February 20th, 1945. Bourgeois served as a wartime nurse in World War II, first war in the Philippines, and then on to a post-war assignment in occupied Germany. She also served stateside through the Korean War and beginning of the Vietnam War era. Bourgeois will be celebrating her 102nd birthday this Christmas Eve and is one of only 22 known living World War II women veterans. LSU joined a national roll call today for Veterans Day. Participants gathered on the parade ground in front of Memorial Tower today to pay homage to fallen Louisiana soldiers. The ceremony began with a moment of silence, followed by a roll call of names. The list consisted of service members from Louisiana who lost their lives during Operation Enduring Freedom, Operation Iraqi, Freedom and Operation New Dawn. Coordinator for Veteran and Military Student Service, Adam Jingying, said the event hit close to home. Personally, uh, as a veteran of Afghanistan, it uh, holds a, a lot of significance to me. I've lost friends in Afghanistan, so uh, I know firsthand uh, the sacrifices that are made. For more information about the National Roll Call, visit va.eku.edu slash rollcall. Turning our attention overseas, Typhoon Haiyan continues its path towards South China, leaving a path of destruction in its wake. Reporter Ivan Watson has more on the storm's devastating impact to the Philippines. Approach to a shattered city. Tacloban, the first major population center to be struck by Super Typhoon Haiyan. Amid the ruins of the airport here, desperate people waiting for food and clean water. Some hoping for a flight out of the storm zone. Hopefully we can get a C-130 to Manila or something, I don't know. We'll just have to see. We'll whatever. just have to wait. Yeah, it's a waiting game, as, as it is with in any situation like this. It's catastrophic. In this catastrophe, some residents say they're terrified of lawlessness and looting. We are forming groups now. As a matter of fact, if you will see, since last night we have whistles, you know. We were all awake the whole night. If somebody attempts in our uh, street, you know, we all we sell with flashlight and everything. We have our firearms, we will shoot, you know, within our property. You you're, know. you're afraid of being robbed. Yeah, we're afraid of being robbed. From the misery and fear of Tacloban, we fly west. Following the path of the storm to Rojas, Calibo and Buswanga. We accompanied officials from the Filipino Civil Aviation Authority. Like other government agencies, they're trying to assess damage to other islands in the Philippines. I was uh, 37 years in the Air Force. I've flown all over the country and I have experienced uh, 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 storms before, but not uh, to the extent uh, this one uh, put us into. In the other towns we saw, the typhoon shattered windows and ripped off roofs. But fortunately, these communities did not suffer the far more deadly surge of ocean water that swept through Tacloban. The typhoon swept through here days ago, and now the long, hard work of rebuilding has just begun. All of this damage was done in just a matter of hours, and nobody here really knows how long it will take to truly recover. No electricity, no water. And the most badly, we have no flights, no... Uh, boat coming here, so we have no food. Haiyan has shocked an island nation long accustomed to typhoons. Everyone here tells us they've never seen a storm this powerful before. Ivan Watson, CNN, Tacloban, in the Philippines. The Philippines' food, water, and medical supplies are dangerously short as residents search for a safe haven. Some families on food stamps will now have to pay the price for spending more than their limit. Newsbeat reporter Leah Alexander has the recent glitch in food stamps. 
Walmart's not going to take the financial hit caused by a glitch in their electronic system that keeps up with how much food stamp recipients can spend. Last month, the store Xerox monitoring system didn't enforce the cap on spending shoppers have on their government-issued EBT card. Walmart is just one of many corporations that would not be reimbursed by the state for customers overspending their food stamp budget. Susie Saunier, the Secretary of State at the Department of Children and Family Services, says in a statement, We must protect the program for those who receive and use their benefits appropriately according to the law. We are looking at each case individually, addressing those recipients who are suspected of misrepresenting their eligibility for benefits or defrauding the system. While many took advantage of the system's glitch, others are just thankful to be on the food stamp card program. Candace Coleman is a Baton Rouge, Louisiana resident with a family of three, spending $300 a month to feed her household. Um, it cuts down on the cost. Money that I would be spending on food, I can now spend on bills. Coleman signed up for the program in October and plans to remain on it for her and her family. For Tiger TV, I'm Leia Alexander. Violators will receive a letter about the disqualification along with how to appeal the matter. In most severe cases, under federal guidelines, some could lose the privilege permanently. Teenagers are helping to convict their peers in juvenile crime. Teen Court is a pretrial juvenile diversion program sponsored by the Baton Rouge Bar Association for teens accused of misdemeanor offenses. The advocate says that 16-year-old teen prosecutor persuades the jury to punish a teenage defendant who used a fake ID to enter a bar during a birthday party. The courtroom is surveyed by an adult judge, but the teenagers do the rest. There's a six-member teenage jury and a teenage defense attorney. Teen Court in Baton Rouge began in 2006 after local officials saw the success of the program in other countries. Well, it's been hot and cold and rainy. wonder what it's going to be like for the rest of the week. I know. Let's see what that weather forecaster Lauren Graham has to say. Stay with us. Good evening, LSU. I'm Lauren Graham, and here's your daily weather forecast. Hope everyone had a great fall break. We definitely experienced fall weather this weekend. Our picture of the day is of Mike the Tiger. This picture was taken this weekend when Mike was cheering on the Tigers and enjoying the beautiful weather. Tonight, the high is 67 degrees and the low is 52 with a 0% chance of rain. It should be pretty chilly tonight, so remember to dress warm. On Tuesday, temperatures should decrease even more. The high is 69 degrees and the low is 31. It should be quite windy with winds coming in from the north at 21 miles per hour. Now to the five-day forecast, temperatures should continue to decrease on Wednesday and Thursday, but we might see a little rain towards the end of the week. It seems like we're transitioning into winter weather. It's time to bring out the heavy coats and Ugg boots. That's all I have for you today, so don't forget to check Tiger TV for your up-to-date campus weather report every day. I'm Lauren Graham, back to you at the desk. Thanks, Lauren. Coming up, a wounded soldier find his own way of treatment. And stay tuned for details on a mass recall of ready-to-eat food products. Stay with us. Welcome back to Newsbeat. I'm Sarah Gastonell with your weekly shot of MedWatch. Happy Veterans Day and thank you to all who have served our country and are still serving, and especially those soldiers wounded in combat. Wounded soldiers find different ways to find relief from their injuries, but one soldier's strategy stands out. Samuel Wally uses ink and a needle to relieve his pain. In fact, the tattoos are actually helping him heal from his battle wounds. The adrenaline from the tattoos became a natural drug for Specialist Wally, who was injured in Afghanistan in 2012. The adrenaline causes all the pain in one area that a soldier might have injured to be released and focused on the area that's being tattooed. Specialist Wally says you don't feel anything. Tattoo, tattoos receive a lot of bad press, but in this case, tattoo artist Tina Marie believes they heal people's soul. Speaking of treatments, a new way to treat adjusting eyesight has been discovered. Typically, perfect vision requires numerous trips to the eye doctor and different pairs of glasses just to see near and far. However, a new trend in self-focusing glasses allows users to instantly adjust their prescription with just a light touch or toss of the head. It turns out that super-focused lenses are already widely available in the U.S., but the word just hasn't spread yet. There's been some rather breaking news in the food industry. More than 180,000 pounds of ready-to-eat salads are, and sandwich wrap products are being recalled. These products were made with fully cooked chicken and ham. 
The Department of Agriculture says the food may be contaminated with E. coli. These products were made by Glass Onion Catering and include brands as big as Trader Joe's. Now you're probably thinking you should avoid the brand Trader Joe's, that the brand new Trader Joe's that's open in Baton Rouge, but thankfully the products were only shipped to Arizona, California, Nevada, and Washington. At least 26 people have been sickened in three states by E. coli in recent weeks. Of those 26, 15 ate products included in the recall. Thank you for watching this week's Shot of MedWatch, and don't forget to tune in next week. Back to you all at the desk. Thanks, Sarah. Well, that's all the time that we have for Newsbeat today, but you can catch our full show online at TigerTV.TV or on our YouTube channel. And be sure to connect with us on Facebook and Twitter for our latest updates. From all of us at Newsbeat, thanks for joining us. And a special thank you once again to all of our veterans. Have a great evening.